welcome to Moving Kentucky Forward. I'm Bruce Maples, your host, and this week we're talking with Honey Goldman and Tally Russell about a new effort to get more people to vote called Vote Now Kentucky. Their tagline is, it's your right to fix what's wrong, and they've got some great info and some solid partners. It's Monday, October 7th, and time to move Kentucky forward. Let's get started. So we're here with Honey Goldman and Tally Russell, and they have a new organization that they want to tell us about. Welcome to Moving Kentucky Forward. Thank you very much. We're delighted to be here. Thank you. So a lot of people know Honey Goldman's name, but I'm not sure that as many of our listeners might know you, Tally Russell. So why don't both of you take about 20 seconds and just tell us about yourself and what you do. So I, uh, again, Tally Russell, I am a lifelong Kentuckian. I was born, raised, and educated right here in Louisville. Um, I always like to say I've gotten out of the city. I've traveled, but I haven't found a place better than home. So I haven't moved yet. Um, I am really excited to be chairing this movement. Um, I kind of grew up in government relations and the health policy world uh, early in my career. I work um, for a startup company right now called Nascend, and we do some training and education around um, substance-exposed infants, so we're training hospitals how to treat those infants better. Uh, But in my spare time, I really am passionate about Vote Now Kentucky and what we're doing to try and move Kentucky forward and to get folks out to the polls to vote. Excellent. And honey? Well, as people know me as a a very quiet, shy, retiring uh, person Mm -hmm. who never writes up as or speaks out against um, injustices of the world, uh, one of the things that I have uh, decided, and I pulled together uh, the Women's Coalition, and the Women's Coalition, we've been doing things for about a decade, uh, form, candidate forms, all uh, 501c3, nonprofit, nonpartisan events, um, one year we did the mayor's uh, debate with WLKY. Another year we did the lieutenant governor's race with Wave uh, TV. And so this year we decided that what we really needed to do was talk about people that don't vote, um, especially uh, millennials, Generation Z, and uh, low uh, voter turnout precincts. And we've got about 20 coalition members and supporting organizations uh, like Junior League, like Lynx, uh, Metro Office uh, for Women, National Council of Jewish Women, uh, Women Lawyers. Um, All the uh, universities are on board, uh, including Bellarmine and Simmons College and Spalding and UofL. Um, as well as the Jewish Community Relations Council, because we all believe that we can do better in getting people out to vote. Okay. So the organization is called Vote Now Kentucky, and the website is just that, votenowky.org. But it seems to be focused primarily on Louisville. First of all, am I correct about that? And secondly, are there plans maybe to expand it? Absolutely. So we really are focused on Louisville right now. Um, We are a young organization that is growing, and so we're really focusing on a citywide education campaign to get out the vote. We want to see what works here in the city and how we can kind of really target and focus here. And then our mission will be to grow over the course of the next year, looking at the 2020 election to move all throughout Kentucky. Let me explain uh, to your listeners, why we are centering on uh, focusing on Generation Z and Millennials. In 2020, they will be the largest voting bloc, uh, surpassing baby boomers and uh, Generation um, X, I believe, is after, uh, before Millennials. Uh, they will represent like almost 40% of the potential voters for 2020. And these are groups that are not engaged. They do not understand why 
they should vote. They do not understand why their vote matters. And a lot of this is, is educating them on how their vote can change their lives. Okay, so that's great because I think that's a, a really excellent target group. Uh, I've looked over your website, and it's got some excellent information on it, and I will uh, link to it in the show, and I may even post the PDF or link to the PDF that people can get. But I right. only I only see information. Are, are there any actions or activities? Uh, how are you going to do something more than just put up a website? Well, one of the things we're doing is talking to you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's that's excellent, and I'm glad you're doing that. The media has been very receptive because we are nonpartisan, right? Um, uh, and giving us you know wonderful media coverage on it. We are taking the posters, and uh, Tally can tell you about that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we just had a, a youth voter forum yesterday morning um, down in Portland and Louisville, and we had. Um, a recent college graduate come. We had the director of marketing and communications for Greater Louisville Inc., which is the city's metro um, metro chamber. We had a first-term state representative join us, and then we had a, some really great audience participants as well, being a, a city council member who is actually a millennial and another state rep. Um, so we we're trying. We've done this voter forum. We're working on getting the handouts out to people. We really want this to be almost kind of grassroots, right? So we want to get some information out. We want to rely a little bit on our coalition partners to talk um, to their membership. We want to hang our posters in local um, restaurants and local stores, and we want people to kind of start talking about it. Um, We've chose a tagline being, um, it's your right to fix what's wrong. And so we know that that is a little bit in your face, right? And so it's meant to be. Because we are a bipartisan organization, um, what this, you know, our tag doesn't go towards one side or the other. Everybody has issues that they're passionate about. Everybody has something that they they might want to fix about our government or our community. And so we're using that as kind of a conversation starter. We're, like I said, we're trying to do this a little bit grassroots where people are starting to talk about it. We're giving the information out. We're sharing it with coalition partners. And then we really want folks to kind of take a little bit of responsibility about voting and about getting your friends to vote and getting your neighbors to vote and really talking about why we vote and why we don't and making plans to vote. Well, I was going to say, the other thing is there's a lot of misinformation that is out there. Um, and and it's being circulated like, you know, make sure, you know, your deadline for registering and changing uh, your um, voter information or checking your voter information is Monday, um, October 7th. But people are leaving out the 4 p.m. It's that 4 p.m. deadline on Monday, October 7th that, that's vital because if you try to register at 401 you you're lost it ain't gonna it ain't gonna you're, it's not gonna happen uh, the other is is that what you need to take to the polls again a lot of this is information that people just do not have um, it and we tried to boil it down so it's very readable very user-friendly it's a basically one page and you can skim over it, and you don't get into all the legal, legalness, legalese language. The gobbledygook. The gobbledygook, as, as Sally says. But, but you know, what is it that you do when you go to the polls? What do you need to take? And very few people say, well, you know, I don't have a driver's license. Um, I, I don't have this. I don't have that. And then I go, you got an expired credit card? And they go, yeah, somewhere around here I have an expired credit card. And even elected officials do not know that you can use that to go vote. Also, elected officials don't know that if, you, if you're able to vote early by absentee, you have to go down to 7th and Ormsby. They're still thinking that you have to go to Barrett. Right. Don't go to Barrett. Please don't go to Barrett. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's not there. Okay, so basically you're counting on 
grassroots work, so you're talking about these organizations helping you and other people helping you, I assume then that it's okay for people to grab the PDF and print it out and put it up wherever they want. Is that accurate? That's the reason why we have it downloadable. We have it shareable. We're, you know, we have a Facebook page. We're on Twitter. We, uh, Ben uh, Salee did, um, uh, made us a, a YouTube site, if I'm saying this right, being over 50. Um, a YouTube channel. A YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Hey, I did, I did a live stream yesterday with Sally's help, so I am absolutely thrilled. But um, it is, you know, whatever people can do to help people vote, you know, taking them to the polls, um, urging them to vote. One of the things that I love to talk about is uh, I'll go to restaurants um, and as I'm sitting there with friends, and at this point my friends are just absolutely disgusted with me because they know that I'm about to turn to the server and say, are you registered to vote? Sure. Do you vote? Sure. And usually the line is, what difference does it make? You know, yeah. it's too difficult. You know, my vote doesn't matter. And then we go into our spiel, which is? It's actually really interesting. So in Kentucky, the, our governor now, Governor Matt Bevin, was actually um, elected for his, um, he beat his, I'm sorry, he beat his primary opponent by 86 votes right here in Kentucky in the last election four years ago. Right. And so we, we hear this all the time as my vote doesn't matter, my vote doesn't matter, you know, the electoral college and all of that. And it's just, it's, I think it's just such a misnomer. And I think people need to really understand that their vote does matter. There were um, seven races uh, in the state house uh, last term that were won by less than 500 votes. One of those, or one of those races was won by one vote. So somebody became a state house representative by a single vote. If the uh, thing I like to tell people is that uh, if one more person in every county had voted differently, we'd have a different governor. Oh, absolutely. There's 80, you know, there were 83 votes and there's 120 counties. Yeah, it's funny because I do the same thing. I look at people and say, are you registered to vote? And they say, no. And I say, well, it's very simple. Go to GoVoteKY.com and get registered. It takes five minutes. Absolutely. Are you working, uh, you, you've got these sponsor organizations. Are you working with any of the other groups that are out trying to get people registered or doing voter turnout no. of their own? Because we are a very clean and a very strict 501c3. So while there are other groups out there, we we do not do what the campaigns do. We are not targeting potential voters or their base. We have a, a different mission. Uh, we want to get to the people who normally do not vote, that are ignored by the campaigns. Okay. And, and one of the things, Bruce, when you talk to people, especially younger people, about uh, why they should vote, uh, you know, ask them if they like their health insurance. Ask them if they like paying, paying minimum wage. Ask them if they are, you know, thrilled with their student loans, uh, if they want better education for their children. And they kind of, you know, like look at you and you go, all of this can be changed by your vote. Right. To circle back to your question, too, we, we really appreciate what everybody's doing to get out the vote. I know that it takes all of us, and it makes sense for a lot of us to coordinate too, but we are also kind of trying to do something different. We're trying to look at it from a different viewpoint and really be nonpartisan and be a little bit more in your face with the slogan and the everything. And we, so we're just trying something new and different, a different approach and see if maybe we can move the needle some. Well, I have to say, I really, really like the tagline. Uh, I think it's uh, catchy. I think it will get people's attention. And you, and you, you may thank uh, the Q agency for that. Q the agency, yeah. Q the agency. Uh, it came up with the tagline and the, and the logo, and our wonderful button, of which we cannot say what it says over the airwaves. Well, I'm I'm missing out. All I see is a button that says vote. There's another one that says vote or S T S U. Uh, and I'll leave your listeners to, to think about what that might stand. All <laughs> right, then. 
that sounds great. I'll have to, I got to get me one of those to start wearing it. Yeah. All right. So Tally Russell and Honey Goldman uh, leading this organization called Vote Now KY, uh, put together by a bunch of uh, women's organizations uh, focusing on Louisville this year, but spreading hopefully statewide next year, really trying to uh, turn up the turnout. And the other thing, that. yeah, turn up the turnout. That's yeah, great. turn up the turnout. The other thing is, is that there are national voting uh, sites, uh, nonpartisan, and they are seeing, looking to see what we do here, to see if they cannot really connect on a different level uh, nationwide with uh, Generation Z and the Millennials, mm-hmm. because as you know, you know, they're on their phones, they're on their iPads. They don't understand why they cannot vote online. Yeah. Uh, they don't understand, and frankly, neither can I, um, you know, why are there so many restrictions in Kentucky uh, about voting, especially voting early? Um, and our line back to them is you have it in the po- your power to change that by whom you all elect. Uh, the other is, is to remind them that in 2020, that's the census year. And a lot of these districts are going to be redrawn by whomever is in power in the General Assembly. So if, if you don't like the gerrymandering that's going on now, you might want to think about who you want to vote for and start asking questions. The other thing that we want to point out is that one of the other things that we get is, especially from female voters, uh, we don't have enough information. I, I'm afraid of making the wrong choice. I'm afraid of making a mistake on, on who to vote for. And what we say is, you know, besides go to the, the candidates' websites, see who um, or is it, who, what their platform is, um, who's endorsing them, uh, what uh, uh, um, committees or what organizations they belong to, but also ask your friends who they are ve- voting for or ask the people that you don't like who they're voting for and vote for the other person. And you don't have to vote for every race that's on the ballot. So if you want to show up on Tuesday, November the 5th this year and just vote for governor because that's the only person that you're most confident about, then all you have to do is fill in that ballot. It still is going to count for that race, and then the rest of the races don't. I would encourage everyone to vote for every race to educate yourself and engage in in the political process. But you don't have to vote for every race if you're not confident. I want to follow up on what you just uh, talked about. You said national turnout the vote groups are watching what you're doing. Are there plans to expand this into a mobile app or any sort of work like that? Only if we can get the elected elected officials that are willing to do that. I mean, right now you can you can use your phone. In fact, I was at the Apple Store getting a new phone, talking to one of the, the very smart uh, millennials that are worth there, and he said no, that he had not registered to vote because it was so difficult. And at that point, I pulled out my phone and hit the um, website, and I said, here. And he said, that's all I have to do? And he, and he goes, this is great. So we need to expand on that, and that will be expanded. The question is, how soon? Um, what is it, 39 plus the District of Columbia, 39 states? Um, have no excuse early voting so that anybody can go in there and vote. Uh, here, we're, we're regulated between 6 and, and 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So if you are a doctor or a nurse or somebody that's doing a 12-hour shift, you're not going to be able to vote, and there's no way for you to vote early because you're, you're not, you know, in the last trimester of pregnancy or you're not going into surgery. Right or you're not going to be out of the county. So, yes, you know, this will change, but it's going to change because millennials and Generation Z are going to get out and vote. And demand it. And demand it. Yeah. 
That's what I was going to say. They're going to look at it and go, no, 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 no this is too archaic. we got to change this. Exactly. We are all buggy whips, Bruce. You and I are buggy whips. <laughs> the, the, I know what that is. I know. She doesn't even know what that means. I mean, it is, I'll explain that off there. It is, it's the changing of the times, and it's going to change, and we are seeing more millennials thinking about running. Well, and I think that that's part of why we're we're really trying to focus on this audience, too, is that we've got to find a way to engage young people in the process. So they have to start first, first with voting. Um, we were talking with uh, Councilwoman Dorsey yes. yesterday. She was talking. She is a millennial, and she decided to run because she was not feeling inspired by any of the candidates that were on her ballot. And so she talked about not voting for a long time, and then she... Was it, then she just said, you know, I'm going to vote. I'm going to be that person that starts to inspire others um, to get out and vote. And so we we have to start seeing that shift. We have to start pushing that shift. We need to start electing folks that look like us and that have the same value systems as we do. And so that's really why it's so important for us now to focus on, you know, this education and engagement piece, which we're trying to do with Vote Now um, Kentucky. Um, to just move the needle a little bit and to, to educate and engage. Cool. All right. Tally Russell and Honey Goldman leading Vote Now Kentucky. Thank you for your time. I'm going to be sharing this with lots of people, and I hope that it's very successful. Thank you. We're incredibly grateful. That was Tally Russell and Honey Goldman talking about their new organization, Vote Now Kentucky. You should visit their website at Vote now ky.org download the pdfs there then print them out and share them everywhere you can that's what i'm going to do this week including putting some up in shops high frequent and possibly seeing if i can get some put out in various public places the info is excellent and needs to be shared thanks to tally and honey for talking with us and for leading this new and important work that's all for now see you next week <music>